believe that God put the sun, moon, and stars in their courses and said, let them be for signs and for seasons, days and years. The word seasons is moedim, which are the appointed times or the feast of the Lord. In Leviticus 23.1, we begin reading, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying to them concerning the feast of the Lord, which you shall proclaim to be holy convocations, holy mikra, or holy rehearsals. These are my feast, he said. And we see that the feast of the Lord are detailed in Leviticus 23. And the first feast, as it says, six days shall work be done, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of rest, a holy convocation. You shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of Yahweh in all of your dwellings. The weekly feast is the Sabbath, and that is the day of the holy convocation that is set aside each week that shows the picture of the coming Messiah, the millennial reign of the Messiah in the seventh or Sabbath day, the day or the millennium of the Lord. And to be in a culture such as even Jerusalem today, in which the, the people in that culture work so diligently to, to enjoy that Sabbath, that day that is set aside, and to participate in this rehearsal, we see that on the sixth day, Friday, which would be understood here in the West, but on the sixth day, we all get up very early in the morning because we all have chores that are set aside for us to do during that period of time. And we plan it well in advance so that we get up in the morning. And if there's one day in which the house is going to be clean and be spotless, it is going to be on that sixth day as we work diligently to clean the house from the top to the bottom. We scrub the floors down, wash the floors right down out into the street, and everything is made spotless on that day. We get all of the laundry done. We get all the food preparation done so that everyone can enjoy the Sabbath. It's not just for men. It's not just for women. It's not excluding the children. Everyone works very diligently in the sixth day because we know that the time is coming in which no man can work. And so we work diligently during that period of time. And in, uh, in that culture, after we have the, the work done and the house is clean, then what we do is we go down to the marketplace. And, and uh, many times uh, in Jerusalem, we'll live just uh, a few blocks away from the Shuk, the outdoor market, uh, which is very large there. And uh, on that day, on the sixth day, it is shoulder to shoulder. It is packed as people from all over the city and all over the area come to Jerusalem to get the fresh fruits and the vegetables and the fish and the chicken and all the provisions. Because if there is going to be one great meal that week, it is going to be the Sabbath meal. Why? Because we may suffer want and need in this time of man ruling and reigning upon the earth. But when the Messiah rules and reigns upon the earth, life will be abundant. And so we want to picture that and to, to participate in that rehearsal every single week. And as we go down to the Shuk, it is so packed with people. And that is the, the day on which the bakers in the city of Jerusalem will bake the braided loaf, the challah, which looks like one who has folded their arms to rest on the Sabbath. But they bake the challah differently than they do any other day of the week. On this day, it is baked with raisins, it's baked with honey, and with nuts, and it is sweet to the taste. Because when the sun goes down and we break that bread on the Sabbath day, that is sweet to the taste. Because we may experience some bitterness in this life, but when the Messiah reigns, life on earth will be sweet. And when we take that sweet howl into our mouth, it just reminds us of the time that the Messiah will rule and reign upon the earth. It is during that day in which... We are getting all the provisions together that the, the poor, the widows, and the orphans, will, they will sit out on, on Jaffa Street, and they will sit out there before the bus stop with bags and with also with boxes and box tops, and they'll just sit out there. And as people come out of the outdoor market, then as they, they go to get into their buses and the taxi cabs and walk back to their homes, then they will stop and they will place food into the baskets and the box tops of, of the poor and the widows and the orphans that are out there on the street. Because the scripture speaks very specifically that our tithe is to take care of the poor, the widows of the orphans and the Levites who have no inheritance in the land. And we see this is exactly how the Messiah interprets it in the gospel as well, uh, rebuking 
uh, giving an example of him rebuking someone at the day of judgment and telling them to depart because they didn't take care of the poor, the widows and the orphans and the Levites who have no inheritance in the land. The Messiah upheld what was spoken in the, in the Torah and told us that we must take care of these people. It's our responsibility. And so it is that uh, one, one day as I w had uh, gotten the provisions for the Sabbath and I was getting ready, I was going to get on the bus and go back to the, the old city of Jerusalem, that an elderly woman came out and she was a bit stooped over. She wasn't uh, very well to do at all, but she had a big bag of provisions, of groceries in her hand. And as she came out, and she, she, she stopped just short of the bus stop and was standing there fairly close to me. And it caught my attention when she was leaning way over her bag and she was looking into the bag of this widow woman that was sitting on the street corner there. And she leaned way over and then she set her own bag down and then stooped down and was looking in this widow woman's bag. And then she stooped over and began taking the things out of this woman's bag. The woman looked at her for just a moment and then didn't say anything, just turned her head the other way. And I couldn't figure out what was going on at this point. This woman took everything out of this woman's bag. And then she put it all back in it, and then she turned around and walked away. She left her bag there, she walked away. Now she has me completely mystified with what's going on. Until a few minutes later, she came back out and she had several small bags in her hands, held in her arms, and she walked over to that woman's bag and took everything and put it all in that woman's bag. Because she saw that that woman, that widow woman, did not have what she needed so that her family could have a good Sabbath. And so this woman took the responsibility on herself and knew that if this family was going to have a good Sabbath, it was up to her to be God's provision for this, for this family. And so she went in and bought exactly what was needed so that they could have a good Sabbath. That's exactly what, what God has instructed in His Torah, and it's just such a beautiful picture of God's people taking care of each other. And I believe that's what, one of the reasons why the welfare system in America has gotten so far out of hand, because... It was the believers who, to be obedient to God's instructions, were to take care of the poor and the widows and the orphans. And because they didn't, then the government stepped in and started extracting money and then keeping most of it themselves and then doling it out in minute amounts to the people that really needed it, building incredible multi-million dollar bureaucracies to be able to give out a little bit. And we see that uh, of the simple commandments that God has given to us so that we can have a, a, a good society that now, instead, we have traded God's few simple commandments, which are just love at the heart of them, and we've traded them for 2.4 million laws in America. And that Americans are truly under the law and under the thumb of now those who are running the federal government in Washington, D.C., as it was John Adams who said, either men will govern themselves by the Scripture or they will have to be governed by the sword. And so it is that we find ourselves uh, many times right on the edge of a police state because we have not governed ourselves properly according to the Scripture and responded accordingly. But it is